microtones to spice up your jazz harmonies? Totally. I thought I was the only one thinking, thinking about that. that. Well then. <sighs> Not again. No matter where I go, this dude follows me. Got him. He always tries to escape me, but in vain. I am superior. In the name of the Twelfth Tip Empire, I shall temper this fool's mind. No matter where I go, and trust me, I tried going everywhere. The Empire finds me and tries to sell me a piano. I mean, there's gotta be a way of escaping this monotony. You need to use other intervals. Intervals Twelfth Tip doesn't have. Wait. Who are you? That does not matter. I'm from the past and the future. You just have to... As long as you always play the same 12 notes all over again, you may undoubtedly create a multitude of beauty, but you'll never experience anything else. It all comes back to a predictable outcome. In order to escape the clutches of 12 Ted, you need to stop thinking in its language. Gotcha. But I don't really trust my ears anymore. I mean, even in the most foreign of places, they made me believe that I'm in 12 somehow. And as soon as I thought that, I was captured again. But I recently acquired this new control panel for my ship. Maybe that will help. Yes. Play something neither the Empire's nor your ears know. Where did he go? I've lost him on my radar. But my senses tell me he's still around. Let me turn on my chord analyzer. He just changed the pitch value of half of his notes. I can predict that. It reminds me of those people changing their reference pitch from 440 to 432 or whatever. It seems like he's found you again. It must have been the harmony that gave your position away. Damn. I thought this new instrument would really help. Don't give up yet. Simply copy-pasting the 12 notes as a chromatic structure and filling in the free pitch spaces won't do the trick though. The chromatic structure of 12 tet itself has to be rearranged. Take a system like 31 tet for example. The step sizes don't line up with any of the 12 tet intervals until the octave is reached again. This way, the harmonies sound different too. Alright, I think I found the right button. Isn't the 31 tet system somehow related to the Overton series? Yes. 12 tet intervals are actually only approximations of the natural phenomenons of sound. 31 tet is closer to most lower limit overtones. It works. It sounds strange, yet beautifully consonant. Where did he go now? He must have managed to change his chords. That can only mean one thing. His temperament is not a multiple of 12 anymore. But I think I can still track him down. I'll just analyze his pitches to see if they form a pattern. Yes, they're equidistant. He can modulate as often as he wants, but he won't be able to break free from this system either. Or any TED system. No! He tracked me down again. Well, there might still be a way, but it's complicated. It means we need to leave everything behind. Are you willing to do that? Yes. I'm ready. Well then, we'll need to call the wizard Sing, who has the power to unlock eons old, ancient sounds. Mr. Olsen, I haven't heard from you in a while. I know, I know. It's been way too long. But we need your help. Can you help our pilot shake off the 12 Ted Empire? So far, they've always been able to track him down. 
no matter which system we've tried. I think I have a spell that will be able to help. It's called Infinitone. From now on, you shall have ultimate control over your tuning. Good luck. <laughs> What just happened? You now are where only few humans have ever dared venture, and even fewer have ever remained. So where is C? Forget about C for now. To free flow with the music, you only need to use the ratios provided by the overtone series. And in most cases, you won't even reach your exact starting pitch, or let's call it frequency, again. But that's okay. Try to let go of that. Wait a minute. I think you need to show me what you mean by that. Of course. Let's take the circle of fifths for example. A fifth is represented by the ratio of 3 against 2. In 12th head, you can stack 12 fifths on top of each other and will reach your starting pitch only 7 octaves higher. You can express that as the ratio of 128 against 1. Now try stacking the ratio of 3 against 2 12 times. My ratio is 129.75 against 1. That's some difference. And you're sure they won't just take some more stacking to reach an octave of my starting pitch eventually? Just an octave higher? Or two? Three? Four? Five? I am. You will come close, but you'll never tune in spot on again. Let's think for a moment of our old pitch names, and you'll soon see a problem arise. Imagine you want to create a song in which your melody can only jump by two just intervals. In this case, fifths, three against two, and just thirds, 5 against 4. As you can see, you can reach the note E in two different ways, starting from C. The quickest way is, obviously, to move one step on this axis. The ratio would be 5 against 4. But on the other axis, you need to calculate 3 against 2 to the power of 4. When you compare the results, you'll find that their difference is the ratio of 81 against 80. So E and E are not the same. Each crossing point on the lattice is a unique pitch and can therefore only be found once on it. Try it out. Sabrak's spells should also work on your keyboard. Crazy. What happens when I want to add another interval to my set of possibilities? Let's say a minus seventh? Well then it already gets multidimensional. I assume you mean the harmonic seventh with a ratio of seven against four? You will eventually reach a pitch that reminds you of E, but it will never be the same. Awesome. The Twelfth Tet Empire will never find me in this infinite jungle. Probably not, because they always temper out their commas. A comma is the difference between two ratios, just like the difference between your two E's. Let's test your persecutor, shall we? Alright. Hey, what's up Twelfth Tet dude? Where are you? I can't find you anymore. We'll reveal our coordinates should you be able to answer this simple question. Which interval is bigger? The one between C and D? Or the one between D and E? They're both the same size. A major second. See? In his mind the ratios of 9 against 8 and 10 against 9 are tempered out and basically mean the same thing. Every TED system tempers out some commas. Okay. So only just intonation is always exact and in tune? Yep. Gotcha. So what do I do with all this information now? Basically anything. But I'll give you a little puzzle. You start with a frequency of 440 Hz and go three steps. In the end you'll arrive at the frequency of 1237.5 Hz. Which just intervals do you have to use to get there? Try using the simplest ratios possible. Hmm. If I push my frequency up an octave, and then lift it by the ratio of 11 against 8, I'm really close, but I can't get there with a simple ratio. And if I go an octave again, and go to 7 against 6 ratios, I'm still a little short. How about you don't start with the octave? 
All right. A just fifth gets me to 660 hertz. Let's add a just major third, and we're at 825 hertz. I feel like I'm getting there. Just another just fifth, and I made it. I'm there. Congrats. The good thing about free flow is that you can always incorporate all ideas from every tuning system you know of. Let's say you're in C and play a just C major chord. You can use the E with the ratio of 5 against 4 as a pivot note and modulate to a just E major chord now. So the G from the just C has to move upwards until it reaches the 5 against 4 from E. The same holds true for the C moving down becoming the just fifth of E. Okay, this already sounds different compared to modulation in 12. Yes. Wait for it though. Doing this trick in 12th tet, you could say in a poorer resolution, you'd end up at C major again. In JI, however, it would make sense to call it a B sharp major. But just find out for yourself. Alright, that's pretty crazy. So many sneaky options. One just needs to keep track of what's happening. Don't worry, you're free now. Do whatever feels right for you and your ears. I think you can start trusting them again, by the way. Don't forget that free flow also means being able to play intervals that are not just. For example, when you feel like reaching a certain frequency and can't find simple ratios to get there, you can always stretch your intervals to be a little sharper or flatter, for example. It's all in your hands. And ears, I guess. Thanks, Master Olsen. And what are you doing now? Well, seems like we're done here. Our reign is over. To freedom of pitch. Thanks for watching this episode. Yeah, thanks for watching this mini-series. We hoped you liked the fun ways we came up with to narrate these kinds of topics. If you want more, check out our YouTube channel. But before we let you do that, we want to thank the amazing Who team who helped make these videos possible. Especially Tam, Goran and Diego. Stay tuned!